Yes, yes. Welcome to the ancient world of tabletop games. I am Agamemnon from the historical documentary Time Bandits. This is a report from a fugitive. The original Lazy Susan was a board gamer who hired a butler, Stanley Catan, to move her playing pieces in games of Monopoly. Stanley Catan went on to influence the design of a game called Carcassonne. Susan Ludology, on the other hand, faded from the gaming scene during the Great Dice Crash of 1936. And that is a board gaming fact. Let's turn the tables on turntables. For those of you watching in black and white, this compartmentalized turntable is green on the left and red on the right. And for those of you with difficulty telling left from right and green from red, bless your hearts. I held credit left over from a Dog Might Games purchase that couldn't be fulfilled, so I had the company spin this turntable into the parcel. It's not the first Lazy Susan to grace the video studio. Why did I bother with a turntable at all? For reasons of gameplay, of course. This version has compartments for snacks at the gaming table. Obviously, that's not true. It's partially true worldwide, but that's neither here nor there. Table management is an important part of gaming. Beyond the playing of games, table management is also a vital component, an essential cogwheel in making videos about games. Storage boxes with awkward lids do not make for great on-table arrangements, especially if the items stored in those boxes are cardboard counters that'll take to the skies like confetti in a hurricane if you cause the slightest bump. You will cause that bump, but it certainly won't be slight. It'll be the great dice crash of 1936 all over again, but cardboardy. Originally, my plans for this lazy Susan were complicated by the insane desire to include magnets. I considered a cover for the turntable. One option was to aim for a rubber disc the size of the turntable and use that to reduce the glare from overhead studio lights. Circular rubber mats were readily available, just not in the size and thickness I wanted. The alternative was to take a rubber square and trim the corners. The material has its pros and cons. One of the main problems of trimming a square rubber sheet to fit a wooden turntable was that, frankly, I couldn't be arsed. This is a technical term. Another option was to fit a black pillowcase to the turntable, cut away the excess material to allow decent clearance underneath, and, on the advice of a seamstress, just glue the fabric to the wood. This project wasn't high on my list of fun things to do. It hovered slightly below having my teeth knocked out with a toffee hammer. I considered glue for the turntable, but only sparingly on the underside where I could add magnets. With magnets fixed, I'd fit the cover in place and pin the fabric down with even more magnets. For a project like that, experiment with the fabric before you go near the glue. After several Frankensteinian failures, I threw those plans into the circular filing cabinet and headed in search of yet another option. I decided, if I used a turntable in a video, that I would simply use the turntable in a video. Instead of obscuring the surface with black fabric, cutting back on light reflection, I employed the wooden surface purely for its ability to act as a contrast against a black studio background. What use is the turntable? That's easy, whatever use I put it to. Not really for displaying figures. Painting channels have their tiny electric turntables for showing off finished models. You'll see painted and unpainted miniatures on this channel, and I'll even throw them onto the Lazy Susan for you, but I'm not going electric. I'll veer off into talk of a failed Kickstarter, which I didn't back. It was around a year before I looked at Kickstarter for board games. The Lazy Gamer was a board game accessory offered in 2016. Let's call it a Lazy Susan for game boards. Here's a mock-up. Instead of standing and walking around the gaming table, instead of stretching an arm all the way across the board, rather than asking another player on the far side of the board to move a playing piece for you, lo, and indeed behold, there was another way. Slap the game board on a turntable and revolve the entire fucking thing for the player's convenience. The turntable was sturdy, made to a high standard, well balanced, and with plenty of clearance for the rectangular surface to pass over any player boards and individual playing pieces not on the main game board itself. I feel that the Lazy Susan for game boards over-engineers a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. 
Get off your backside and move around the table. Reach across the table. Ask another player to make it easier on everyone by moving this monster or that hero on your behalf. Though I knew about kickstarters for games and accessories, I wasn't dipping my toe into that bottomless ocean at that time. Would I have backed the lazy gamer? No. Floating across the Atlantic on a slow wave all the way from Canada, the giant board would have cost more to post, with tax thrown in too, than to buy off the shelf. Is there a use for such a project? I almost see a use for a lazy Susan large enough to hold a massive game board, and that's for video production. Instead of rotating camera heads to film awkward board designs, I'd turn the board. Except, that's bullshit in this studio space. For a small board, I'd turn the board without using a gadget, and a very large board wouldn't clear the rear of the studio, the shelf to the left, the side table to the right, or the camera rigging at the front of this table. No. If I want to film second edition Arkham Horror with its portrait game board design, I turn the camera head on its swivel mount and watch out for a change in cable length leading back to the computer. That's about it for fiddliness, and believe me, that's more than enough. Why did the lazy gamer fail? The Kickstarter asked for a mere ten grand. What did ten thousand Canadian dollars buy you in 2016? Not a one-size-fits-all woodworking process, that's for sure. The project raised around eight times the asking price on the Kickstarter page, and even that excess was nowhere near enough to run a woodworking shop for a niche product. I see 32 backers went in at a dollar, dodged a bullet there. Board game turntables and frames exist, notably for Scrabble. There are jumbo-sized Lazy Susans and rubber-coated turntables out there. Hell, just buy a round table on wheels if you're that reluctant to get up and move across a room. Mind your legs, though. If you don't care about marking your game, clamp a moderate-sized board to a Lazy Susan, or drill a rectangular wooden board, bolt it to a Lazy Susan, and then slap your game board on top of that if you must. There are games with round boards out there, though they tend to be of the jigsaw variety. Turntabling them is bound to prove more trouble than the exercise is worth. Why then do I use a Lazy Susan? Video production. For game purposes, if I decide to film a game with a collaborator across the sea, perhaps that game sings its siren song, demanding an all-round approach. The Climbers would be the best example. I've played this game in the wild and marched around the kitchen table to get the most out of the exercise. When filming, there's no other way around it. You have to go around it. And that really is a board gaming fact. I might use a turntable to film a game of Santorini. Certain card games benefit from a tightly run turntable layout. As for the lazy gamer, when people go looking for that sort of solution, they head in the direction of an oversized lazy Susan, or they don't go looking for that sort of solution at all. What happened to the lazy gamer? You can scroll through the updates on Kickstarter. Those that aren't barred to the casual reader. Posts for backers only are either good news exclusives, once in a very blue moon, or the other kind of posts. The mouldy ones. There's a lazy gamer Kickstarter post that dives into mind-numbing detail on how things went wrong, including a photo of a missing digit, so the squeamish should beware. Perils of woodworking. The lazy gamer. I think of that gadget when I think of turntables on gaming tables, and I know I have this one for video purposes and this other one for table management of game components. To go further than this basic equipment is to hire a butler. That's pretty much where I came in. Well, what goes around comes around. Ask yourself why you would need a turntable. The answer is convenience in the space available. I speak from the sobering experience of having played games in the most awkward locations imaginable and unimaginable. Sometimes I wonder at the most ludicrous places people must have gamed in. I'm convinced the world record is still a game of backgammon played inside the intestinal tract of a resurrected dinosaur. Yes, I'm sure the players used a turntable. Just a gut feeling. A rumour circulating.